Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala şerefil enbiya'i vel mursalin. Muhammedun Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem desliman kathiran kathira. Fama ba'du. My brothers and sisters, I don't know how many of you have seen a scene which I will describe. I am the only one from India here, so I know I have seen it, but maybe the same scene you can see in Pakistan, maybe in Sudan, maybe in Somalia. You certainly won't see it in Europe or America, only in Africa and Asia. And that scene is the site of fields cultivation at the end of summer, when almost the whole summer has passed. In India, we get rain from the monsoon winds, which start around May or end of May, beginning of June. So if you go into India, southern or northern India, any time from February to May, and if you go closer to May, say April or so, you will find the fields are completely, they are dry like bone. And because the soil is clay, it's black, what we call black cotton soil, which is clay soil in which they grow rice, they grow cotton and so on. The soil cracks. So the field is like a jigsaw puzzle. Pieces, pieces, pieces. Not a blade of grass will grow in that field. Nothing. And there will be very small, for want of a better word, villages. It's not really village, village, but it's you know, like maybe 10, 15 huts. And when you say hut, it means hut. Again, as I said, anyone who hasn't seen that, you don't know what is the meaning of poverty. You think a guy sitting with a shopping cart, a homeless guy in on the street is poor. That homeless guy compared to the people I've seen in India, he's like a millionaire compared to them. They have no shoes. They wear one piece of cloth. Literally. That's it. And you can see every bone in their body because they have not eaten. The hut is like a, maybe about three feet of mud wall and then grass. That's it. So you go into the hut and you will generally see the woman there. Even children have gone to work in some construction site in the city, the man has also gone to the construction site. So you ask the woman, where is your husband? He's gone to the construction site, he's working there. He's actually a farmer, he's working there because nothing to eat. But in that hut you will find, almost invariably, a half a bag of grain. Half a bag of wheat or rice or something, half a bag. So you ask the woman, you say, why are you starving? You have got half a bag of grain, which is simply sitting there, why don't you cook and eat? Why don't you feed your family? She will laugh at you and she will say, you are not a farmer. That is why you are asking these questions. So what do you mean? She says, that is seed. We don't eat that. We look after it, we preserve it. Then when the rain comes, we plant it. And when we plant it, we eat for the whole year. If we eat it now, we eat for maybe a month. And then we starve for the whole year. So instead of that, this one month we pass it somehow, and then we eat for the whole year. Because the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, as long as you are holding it in your hand, you will never get anything more. If you want more, you have to let go what is in your hand. When what is in your hand leaves your hand and goes up, the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down. Because the, what is in your hand is the seed which you plant. What comes out of there is the harvest. And the harvest is always, always, always more than the seed you planted. This is the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned to us and told us very clearly in the ayat just before Ayat al-Kursi in Surah al-Baqarah, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnakum min qabli an ya'tiya yawmun la bay'un fihi wa la khullatu wa la shafa'a wal kafiruna humu zalimu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O you believe, spend from what we have given you. Anfiqu mimma razaqnakum. Allah did not say sallu or sumu. Allah didn't say fast, pray before the time comes or fast before the time comes. No. Allah said spend before the time comes. Now this does not mean you should not, should not pray. Father, I mean, that is, you know, that, that's the basic boundary condition. If you leave salah, you are out of Islam. So that's not the question. The point is, importance. Allah SWT is saying spend from what we have given you before a time will come when you will not be able to spend. Then you cannot give in sadaqah because you are standing before Allah. Then there is no friendship. Then there is no shafat. Then there is nothing except the adal of Allah SWT. We ask Allah for His mercy inshallah. مِنْ قَوْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ يَوْمُ لَا بَيْعٌ فِيهِ وَلَا خُلَّ there is no buy, there is no buying and selling, there is no business, there is no khulla, there is no khalil, there is no friendship. Wala shafa'a illa mashallah. Wala shafa'a. Wal kafirun ahmu zalimun. And the people who deny, these are the people who are the deniers here, these are zalimun. I remind myself and you, the biggest trap that we fall into is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put wealth, Allah put wealth, in charity and we search for wealth in hard work and in smart deals and may Allah forgive us in telling lies in the name of advertisement in deceiving people there's no wealth in that wealth is in charity Allah Ta'ala ne daulat ko sakhawat mein shupaya hai دولت کو محنت میں نہیں چھپایا ہوشیاری میں نہیں چھپایا سخاوت میں چھپایا ہے That's why رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said If you fear poverty, give صدقہ I see the hadith, this is the amazing hadith, right? If you look at it logically, it doesn't make sense I already don't have money I'm already in suffering, I'm already having financial problems And you are telling me to give in صدقہ But you know, you know how to whom it makes sense? It makes sense to all farmers <laughs> it makes sense to all farmers. They say that is right, absolutely. When you have, when you have a little bit, don't eat it. Plant it. What is sadaqah? Sadaqah is planting. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, you have a little bit, don't eat it. Plant it. If you eat it, you will eat only that much. You won't get anything more. You plant it, Allah will send you more. Huh? If you have a little bit, don't eat it. Plant it. Give sadaqa. Wallahi, try this in your life and you will see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you spend, the more Allah gives you. And remember, Allah does not give only in one way. Right? So don't look for only money. Allah will give in health. Allah will give in safety. Allah will give in peace of mind. Allah will give in success for your families. Allah will give you in terms of beautiful marriages. Allah will give you in terms of dignity and love and affection and, and izza before people. People who do not even know you, they will love you, they will respect you. You ask them why, when you know this man has done something for you, no? Alhamdulillah. Allah gives in multiple ways. Allah gives in ways which we don't even understand because we won't know. But when we meet Allah, Allah will show us. Allah will give you when you're driving on the road, the whole road, there will be sleet and there will be ice and there will be cars which are hydroplaning and so on, but you will go safely through. Nothing will happen to you. Hmm? Allah gives in His own ways. Abdullah ibn Umar radhiallahu anhu, he says one day he was going somewhere and uh, he stopped in a place, he got tired, so he stopped in a place to rest and he found there was a shepherd there who had a whole bunch of sheep and he was also sitting under some shade of a tree and Abdullah when Umm Nammar radiallahu anhu says I was watching him he said the dog came now this is in the middle of nowhere it's not in near the town or anything else 
The dog came. When the dog came to the shepherd and he's looking at the shepherd, he says the dog was hungry, he was thin. He was looking at the shepherd with, you know, looks, looking to see if he can get some food. So the shepherd went into his cloak, he pulled out a bag and from this bag, bag he took out a bread, uh, you know, hummus, like a roti, and he gave it to the dog. So the dog ate it up. He was very hungry. You can see from the way the dog ate that he was starving. And still the dog is looking at the shepherd. So the shepherd took out another bread and roti and gave it to him. The dog ate that also. The dog is still there, still looking at the shepherd. So the shepherd took out a third one and he gave it. And the dog ate the three and the dog left, went away. So Abdullah ibn Umar says, I went to this man and asked him, I said, who are you? So he said, I'm so-and-so. I'm the slave of so-and-so and these are the sheep I grace, belong to my master. So Abdullah ibn Umar said to him, why did you feed this dog? He said, you know, this is the desert. This is the wilderness. Dogs are usually near towns and villages. So this dog, we don't know where he came from. So obviously there is no nothing for this dog anywhere here. And he came, he's looking at me with hope in his eyes. So I gave him. How can I not give him? He's looking at me with hope in his eyes. You can give me. So Abdullah bin Awar said to him, do you have any more bread for yourself? He said, no, I gave him the last. He said, what about you? He said, I'll go home tonight, I will eat. He said, you'll be hungry the whole day? He said, yeah, it's okay. You won't kill me. Huh? So Abdullah Nawa Radhilama says, I had started from Madina to go somewhere. He said, I turned around. I went back to Madina. He said, I went to the owner of this man, this slave. He said, I bought the slave from him. I bought all the sheep. I bought the place where this man used to put the sheep, the pen, the sheep pen and that piece of land. He said, I bought all of that. I went back and I gave the paper to the man. He said, I, swear, I said to him, you are free. The sheep all belong to you. And the place where you put the sheep also belongs to you. Huh? I said that Abdullah Ibn Abba Radhi Lama said, but you know, the kind of man he was, maybe even all that he gave away to somebody. So I'm saying this because this is the story of one slave. One slave. Where is the creator of that slave? And you are my creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abul Alameen. He says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْحَلْ He said, when somebody comes to ask you, don't turn him away. Don't send him away. وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ Someone for what? Any soul. Any soul. وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْحَلْ Rabbul Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim is saying to Rahmatul Lil Alameen, وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنَّرْ What do you think Allah will do when we ask Him? We say, Ya Rabb, give me because you can give me. Give me because I am asking. Give me because I do not make shirk with you. I don't ask anybody else. I ask only you, so give me because I'm asking you. People will say, Allah, give me whatever is good for me. No, no. Give me this and make it good for me. Allah does not have to choose 
you and I choose because we have no control over the thing. So we choose this or that. Allah does not have to choose. Allah creates. Huwa khaliqu kulli ashya wa kulli ahwal. There is our mouthage. Allah does not need to choose. So ask Allah, say Allah, give me this and put khair in this. Because you can put khair in this. Don't say, oh Allah, give me whatever there is khair. No. Khair is in the hand of Allah. Bi yadihi al khair. Bi yadihi al khair. Al khair laysa fi shayi. Wa laysa fi al hal. Hey, Yusuf alayhi salam was thrown in the well, there was khair. He was taken out of the well, there was khair. He was sold as a slave, there was khair. He was tempted by the woman, there was khair. He was put into the jail, there was khair. He was taken out and put on the throne, there was khair. Kullu khair. Ahwal change. But khair, min Allah ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep your eye and keep your sight on the khudrat and the power and the majesty and the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ask from your point of view, Ya Allah, I am small, I'm... that is why I am asking. Ya Allah, if I could do it, I would do it. Why would I ask you? Why? I ask you because I cannot do it. I ask you because I am helpless. I ask you because I need you. I ask you because there is nobody else. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your sight or his kibriyai or his power or his glory or his majesty or his ability to do whatever he wants. Eh? Ask Allah. So two things. Never turn away anybody. Never. No matter how it is. If he asks you, you give it. Give small what give. Never turn anybody away. Hasan Radhi Allah. Hasan Ibn Ali Radhi Allah. The grandson of Rasulullah Sallam. One day a man came to him, his friend. And he looked very, you know, worried. And he asked him, what happened? Why are you so worried? He said, yes, yeah, I am in, in a bad situation. He said, what happened? He said, I borrowed 400 dinar, gold coins from somebody. And I have to return it. I don't have the money. And I can't return it. And uh, that man is a difficult man. He is you know, giving me trouble. So Sayyidina Hatan went inside, he brought 400 dinar, he said, take this, go, give it, finish it. The man left. Now Sayyidina Hasan in Layla, he's sitting there and he's weeping, he's crying. He's weeping and weeping. They said to him, yeah, Sayyidina, what happened to you? Why are you crying? They said, your friend came, he wanted something, we gave it to him. Hunger, he went to be happy, why are you crying? He said, I am crying because my friend had to come and ask me. Hey, I am supposed to be his friend. He has to come and ask me. It was my job to ask him how he is. It was my job to find out how my friend is. Hey, Ajeeb started that people have left for us, Wallah. He did not have only one friend. What is he saying? He is saying it is your job. Make, keep track who is there, who comes, who goes. Allah, may Allah have mercy on us. We pray next to the person. We don't know the man's name. May Allah bless you. Many of you come here. You know, every day, mashallah, I see you. May Allah bless you. But ask yourself, every day you come here and it is the human habit, we all generally stand in the same place. Which means the person next to you is always the same person. Do you know the person's name? Just the name, I've said nothing else. Do you know the person's name? My point is, if even the name we don't know, what more you know about him? Is he happy? Is he not happy? Is he sick? Or is somebody in his family is sick? He needs something, does not need something. How you even his name you don't know, how will you know anything else? 
Please, my brothers and sisters, this ummah is an ummah, wallahi. This is supposed to be an ummah. What kind of ummah is this? We don't even know each other's names. So please, let us open our hearts. Let us give. Let us learn who each other are. Let us know each other. Let us learn to help one another. Let us learn to inquire about one another. Right? Eh? And then see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. Allah will give you in ways you cannot even imagine. And Allah will give you from places that you cannot imagine. And Allah will put the love of you in the hearts of people who used to hate you. You will see the same people standing up to defend you. And we say, what happened? You hated the man. No, 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 not now. Not now. He's a different man. We'll, we learned now he's a different person. Allah will change hearts. Only Allah can change hearts. Nobody else can change hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla who to give from His majesty and grace. We ask Allah to give from His treasures. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rab, you give us because you don't need it. You don't need it, Ya Rab. We are the ones in need. We ask you, Ya Rab. We ask you, Ya Rab. We ask you and we ask nobody else. Ya Allah, put khayr in it and give it to us. Ya Allah, you don't need to choose. You create, you create and give it to us. Ya Allah, you put your love for yourself. Love for your Habib Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Love for his family. Love for his Zahaba. Love for, his, for the good people in this world. Love for all those actions we need to you. Love for all those actions we need to Jannah. We ask Allah, Ya Rabbi, protect us and protect our families from all evil, from all disobedience. Protect us from all evil that we know and that we don't know. Protect us from that we understand and that we don't understand. Ya Allah, make this life easy for us. You open the doors of, of khair and barakah for us and, and protect us from everything that you dislike. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.